Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Malash Show Welcome to the Eunice Malat Show. I'm your host, Eunice Malat. We're delighted to have with us here Ms. Dara Newson, who is Miss Nebraska U.S. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> and congratulations on winning Miss Nebraska U.S. Thank you. That is a great accomplishment. Yeah, definitely a fun experience for me. So mm -hmm. I wasn't your typical pageant girl that grew up competing in pageants, but I would say overall I enjoyed the experience. So. Oh, that's wonderful. So who inspired you? What situation inspired you to compete in the beauty pageant? Actually, one of my coworkers, I work at Channel 3. I'm a reporter and producer there. And one of my coworkers, who's a morning anchor, kind of introduced the idea to me because she grew up competing in pageants. And when she first brought it to me, I thought, mm, no, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for some reason, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I'm just like, I don't understand why you know, this is on my mind, uh, you know, I dreamt about it, and I thought, you know, I, there's no harm in trying it and giving it a shot, and I did a little research about the different pageants, and, you know, after talking to my family about it, their response was, you're crazy if you don't give it a shot, you know, if you don't try, because you just never know. Exactly. So I did, and um, I was sub definitely surprised by the outcome, but I definitely have no regrets. <laughs> uh, absolutely, especially, you know, competing for the first time and winning, you know. Yeah, How I know. many people have that chance to actually do that? You know? I know, I mean, a lot of the girls that I competed against, they grew up being in pageants, you know, since five or six and seven years old. And that was one of the, I guess, insecurities that I had because I didn't grow up in pageants mm -hmm. and I didn't really understand the pageant system and exactly I went through the training for it the physical training and the interview training and the poise and walking and all of that but obviously when you're going up against girls who have been practicing and training for this for five years and you come in with your six months to nine months of training yeah. you know there's kind of like oh I feel a little intimidated here exactly but people just kept telling me to be yourself be yourself, be who you are, don't change, and you know, that's what's gonna shine through, and that's what and I the, did. And yeah, exactly, and those who were judging the contest saw that there's something special about you, yeah. though you're competing amongst veterans in that yeah. field and stuff, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so give me a high five, yeah. way to go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is excellent, and I'm sure it built your confidence, you mm -hmm. know? Absolutely, absolutely, uh -huh. I mean, I think going into it, yeah. I knew that I was capable, but even I had my insecurities. You know, I mm -hmm. thought, here I am, five foot three, you know, I'm not your typical model type in terms of height, you know? Yes. Um, and I even felt insecure about kind of being the only br brown girl, you know, participating. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know as far as the diversity, how many, um, you know, minorities would be involved. And so I felt insecure even about that. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I told myself, if I don't do it, I can't tell my nine-year-old niece to go out and f conquer her fears, and um, I can't go out and tell my cousins to do the same thing. So that was kind of like the motivating factor where I decided to go ahead and compete and do it. So. Yeah, that is indeed wonderful. That is indeed wonderful. So when you were competing in the beauty pageant and stuff, what were the categories and what were the judges looking for? Um, where there's an evening gown, there's swimwear, you do your opening number, which is not judged, um, and then you have kind of like a runway, mm -hmm. kind of a fun wear segment. Mm -hmm. so you pretty much can wear anything, and that's kind of the opportunity to show your personality. Then there's also an interview segment, and mm -hmm. that's with the seven judges. Wow, one seven on one. judges. Yeah. <laughs> one on one with each mm -hmm. one of them? Yeah. Really? They do it, they call it the red robin, or round robin, I should say, style. So. Mm -hmm. You go to each judge, you have your two minutes, they, they ask you questions, three minutes I think it was, they ask you questions, you don't really know what they're going to ask. But well, What kind of questions do they ask you? Do you remember? Um, like? They ask you about just your personal life, you know, mm -hmm. tell me about yourself. Um, at the national level, it got yeah. a little more, uh, you know, intellectual, yes. you know, they ask you about politics, they ask you about, um, I think they asked me my thoughts about immigration and 
I would say at that point I was thanking God that I was in news because, you know, some people do keep up with kind of the national topics, but then exactly. some people don't. And I feel like if I wasn't in news, I wouldn't mm -hmm. uh, stay abreast about those events and what's going on. Exactly. So the national level, yeah, I got a little more political. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the regional level, they, they really wanted to kind of get to know you mm -hmm. um, and kind of your plans and your ambitions, your goals in life, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so after you went through the whole interview with the seven judges and mm -hmm. stuff, so were you placed at a top five, top six, or what occurred after that? Or? Well, that happened in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that happened in the morning of the pageant, and then um, they do it like on a rubric scale. They judge you out of like 100 points. And so for each division, you're, you're scored. Uh, for swimwear, for interview, for evening, and then the runway, the fun wear segment wasn't judged. It's just kind of your opportunity to show who you are. Yes. Um, and so after the morning interview, we had the um, the show that night. Mm -hmm. And the first was the opening number. Once again, you're not judged on that. It's just kind of a, like a dance routine that all the pageant girls um, participate in. Then you do the swimwear, and then the fun wear, and then the evening gown is the final. Um, segment and then you answer an on-stage question and then that's kind of what some people call you know either that's gonna make you or break you <laughs> so yeah, yeah that's kind of the last thing the final on-stage question oh wow and what was it like being crowned miss nebraska after you know going through the whole competition it was and what was your um, also what was the final final question that the judges asked you the final question i don't remember verbatim mm -hmm. but they asked me what I defined as happiness or what I thought about happiness. And I just remember my response being, um, you know, it comes from within. You know, obviously life is never perfect and never goes exactly the way you want it to be. But, you know, how you think about the situations or the circumstances that you encounter make a world of a difference. So exactly. you kind of choose mm -hmm. when you wake up. Mm -hmm. Okay, am I going to be happy or am I going to be mad? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. yeah, it comes down to the attitude. If you want to be optimistic or pessimistic, Absolutely. you know, yeah. and those produce the results of your life. So yeah. you determine the outcome of your life, basically. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. not to say that, you know, a person wakes up every day happy. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a journey. You it have is. to fight to, to stay happy exactly. and to stay fulfilled mm -hmm. in life. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, as an African American, as a winner of Miss Nebraska U.S., I mean, how do you believe your role is important to Nebraska and beyond? Mm -hmm. Well, two of the main things that I struggled with in terms of competing in the pageant was, you know, I felt insecure about being maybe the only minority participating in it, mm -hmm. and then um, I felt like maybe it wasn't. Um, my purpose or my calling, so to speak, to mm -hmm. be involved in the pageant. And I had to really sit down and kind of evaluate where I was at in my life at that point. And I felt as if it would be a stepping stone for me um, in terms of conquering my fears, conquering my insecurities. And so in terms of that, I feel like that's my role, teaching other young ladies um, of color um, and you know all women in general, that it's important to conquer your fears. You know, it's important not to allow yourself because I feel like at times I was my own worst enemy. I sort of discouraged myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I had all the support that I needed, but mm -hmm. you know, at times it was just, it was difficult. You know, I felt like, oh, what if, what if I don't have what it takes? Or, you know, what if this is not for me? And mm -hmm. you spend so much time questioning yourself and mm -hmm. second guessing yourself where mm -hmm. you miss the mark. You mm -hmm. miss out on a great mm -hmm. opportunity to, that's really a growing and learning experience mm -hmm. for you. So mm -hmm. I would say that that would be my role. <laughs> yeah, that's a great role because we need more models like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to propel and lift up the self-esteem of young girls and young women. Absolutely. That is really important. So that is your platform? Yes, yes. Oh. Con helping girls conquer, you know, their social world, their professional world, mm -hmm. um, personal life, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with relationships. Um, it's so important. You know, and I, I was blessed with, you know, parents in the household and, and siblings in the household. And then, you know, you have people who are blessed with the same thing and then you have some who aren't. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I want to instill some of those same values that mm -hmm. I learned growing up into mm -hmm. um, other young women and share that, that love and mm -hmm. the teaching that I learned growing up. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I just feel as young women, it's so important to share those experiences because we, we have so much in common that we don't even know. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. And if we don't talk about it and discuss it and help each other through it, then mm -hmm. you kind of just stay in the same place mm -hmm. and um, remain, still have those insecurities. And, you know, then that's when jealousy arises mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So what have you done with that platform so far? Well, I've done volunteer work with Girls Inc. Right now, the newest um, project that I'm working on, I'm involved in a global girls leadership group. And that is a new organization that LaVanya Goodwin founded. It actually starts uh, this week, oh. and I'm one of the lead facilitators of the group. So mm -hmm. we're teaching a ninth through 12th grade girls how to um, conquer their professional life, giving them skills to conquer their professional life, their social life, and their personal life. Um, and each month, we're, we kind of have a topic that we'll be focusing on, like October will be self-esteem month. Another month will be you know social media, how to use that to your advantage. And um, I'm just really excited about it. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's starting at North High School, but I believe that it can be something much greater, so. Yeah, oh wow, and it started here in Nebraska, or yes. it's starting here yes. in Nebraska. Yes, And Omaha. then hopefully it will progress to the national level. Absolutely. Oh, yes. that is excellent, that is excellent. Now as a child, you're involved in a lot of t activities. Mm -hmm. Theater, music, and you're an avid writer. Yeah. Yeah, I know, as a <laughs> child, you know? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Usually kids are like, I wanna go and play, I wanna watch TV or play yeah. video games you know <laughs> but you were involved in these activities mm -hmm. I mean uh, what made you decide to be participating in them and how has it transformed your life well growing up I think my mother noticed you know those gifts and talents that I had and she was the one that kind of put me in the performing arts classes and made sure you know I was involved in drama at school and made sure I auditioned for plays so I would say my mom was kind of you know, the main person that set me up in those um, classes. Mm -hmm. And what was the second part of your question? Can How you has it that? transformed your life? I would say, man, as a young child, you know, I was the youngest out of four. So, you know, I was a little more timid and shy, and I think it really helped me develop who I was. Um, my mother constantly worked with me speaking up and being assertive and I just was not that type of kid growing up she would embarrass me to the point where we would go to the grocery <laughs> store uh -huh. and you know they'd say hello and you know I would say hello she's like hello yeah I'm like mom do you really have to embarrass me <laughs> but you know at the time it was yeah. embarrassing but mm -hmm. now that I'm older I realized you know what she was trying to teach me she didn't exactly. want people to run over me she didn't want me to be taken advantage of uh -huh. and you know you don't see that when you're younger but mm -hmm. um, I feel even being involved in you know drama and performing arts, writing and singing, that's all kind of contributed to me kind of growing into myself and being more vocal and being more assertive. So. I know, I think that's really interesting because you're in the broadcast field, yeah. you're <laughs> on the television, you know? Yeah. People see you and then you being shy or growing mm -hmm. up shy, you know, being seen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those are quite interesting, you know? They are. Situations they and are. stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, people assume that, oh, if you're in front of the TV, you must be really assertive, you're not shy, you're mm -hmm. outspoken. But that's less often the case, yeah. don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people are assertive who mm -hmm. are in journalism. You mm -hmm. almost have to be. Exactly. And that was one of the things that I struggled with in terms of being in the field because I felt like, oh, well, if I'm not assertive, you know, I can't do it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of the, the saying, well, if you're not assertive, you won't survive. If you're not mm -hmm. strong, you won't yeah. survive. And yeah. so that scared me. Mm -hmm. um, but all you can do is you can be who you are. And I feel like, yeah, you do have to be assertive, you do have to speak up, but for the most part, I'm sincere and I'm passionate about mm -hmm. what I do. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, whatever story that I need to write, whatever family that I need to talk to, mm -hmm. I just, I would always go into it honestly with prayer, asking God to just kind of give me the strength, give me the words to say, help mm -hmm. me to be assertive mm -hmm. and do what I need to do. And I feel like so far I've been, I've been successful at it. So mm -hmm. just keep yeah. going, it's a day. Yeah. Daily journey. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so where did you go to school? Um, for college, I went to Syracuse University mm -hmm. so from 2005 to 2009. Mm -hmm. And I majored in communications and rhetoric. And it was less of broadcast focus, actually. But I kind of got my broadcast experience being involved in internships on campus. And even when I would come back home for vacation for the summers mm -hmm. and 
holiday mm -hmm. vacations. What's so. rhetoric studies? Um, you know, Aristotle. Oh. You know, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, play on words mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, analogies and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's really interesting. Now, being a reporter and stuff, do you think that it enabled you to be at the forefront of the beauty pageant competition since you're now able to speak eloquent, mm -hmm. to be assertive in front of people yeah. and, you know, be eloquent in your speech? I would say you definitely stand out coming mm -hmm. in with that experience mm -hmm. and I feel like I felt more comfortable you know growing up timid shy kid and then going into the news industry I feel like that that helped me mm -hmm. um, you know be eloquent that helped me answer questions it mm -hmm. helps you think on your feet you know exactly kind of teaches you how to respond to certain mm -hmm. questions exactly um, if you don't know the answer it kind of uh -huh. you know that even teaches you being in the news industry teaches you how to respond and, and you know how you can be diplomatic and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah it definitely helped <laughs> yeah exactly so when the judges were asking you were able to think quickly on mm -hmm. your feet you know absolutely I mean and of course I still had to practice you know yeah. I'm not saying I just went in there knowing everything knowing it all and mm -hmm. you know having been in broadcast journalism I just had it together I mean yeah. you still have to practice but I think being in the news industry it definitely helped mm -hmm. um, as far as already having those skills developed and being confident going in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now what station do you work for here in Omaha? I work for Channel 3, a oh. CBS affiliate. I am a reporter producer there and I mainly work the morning shift. So like tonight I'm going in at 9.30. Wow, you work night shift. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. That's very interesting. So what got you into journalism? I would say my first experience, sorry, I keep fixing my sash here. Oh, it's keeps falling off. Uh -huh. But my first experience was at the Career Center. I went to Central High School, mm -hmm. and um, they had the Career Center. I participated in the broadcast journalism class there. And we did a segment for, I believe, I want to say it was on Channel 6, but it was called Today's Teens, Tomorrow's Leaders. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of my first experience being on TV and anchoring and we would play different roles every day so mm -hmm. we kind of had the hands-on experience of what it was like to be behind the camera behind the scenes in front of the camera editing mm -hmm. and when I did that it was kind of like oh, I found it you oh, know you found your passion <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so I because I was still struggling you know trying to define that was during my senior year I believe if uh -huh. I'm not mistaken junior or senior year so it was mm -hmm. basically during the time where I needed to know yeah. you know what am I going to major in when I go to college and mm -hmm. that was career center broadcast journalism program there was helped me define that so. yeah yeah oh that's wonderful that is indeed really good now being a uh, you know, broadcast being in front of the television and stuff you also worked in the print and radio how is mm -hmm. that different and what sort of like uh, encourage you to get into print and radio well, it's different. It, what I went into, I was a sales assistant. So, you know, I didn't have necessarily the writing component. Um, I didn't have the deadlines to meet. Um, and that was for magazine. When I went into magazine, I mainly was sort of the sales assistant that managed the ads that ended up in the magazine. So, mm -hmm. um, and then I would focus on things like content and editorial. So I would check over the ads and make sure, you know, things were written properly so it's different in that you don't have the same deadline pressure and um, as far as content you don't have to write as much it's more so you're looking over and making sure that everything is done correctly um, and radio broadcast I was a promotions assistant so I pretty much helped the on-air staff when they went out to do um, a live radio hits you know, I was there helping them do the games and helping them get on air on time. And so that's different. You have a deadline pressure, but it's much more laid back in radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can kind of be a little more free. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and I think I decided to do those because when I came back and I graduated from college and I returned to Omaha, I started working for a local television station for a little bit. And after I did that, I thought, well... I'm not sure if 
I want to do this. <laughs> and so, you know, as a young person, I think I just kind of went back and forth trying to really find my place still. But I knew that I wanted to stay within the communications field. And the closest that I knew that I could get to that was, you know, at least staying, you know, doing radio or magazines. So. Exactly, exactly. So it's like sort of like a long process itself, yeah. you know, and getting all those experiences got you to where you are right now. Mm -hmm. Because when people look at individuals on television, reporters like yourself, mm -hmm. they don't really realize the work that's required, the writing skills. And you mentioned that how, you know, you're the jack of all trades mm -hmm. in terms of you produce, you report, you video, you're a photographer. I mean, mm -hmm. the list goes on. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, well, even after I went to, or after I graduated from college, I wasn't one of those young people where I'm like, okay, I got my degree, I know everything, I'm ready to go into the real world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had that confidence, obviously, I uh -huh. wanted to get a job, so you kind of have to have that mindset. But even after that, I did freelance work because I wanted to hone my skills, I wanted to get better at writing. I mean, it's, it's not something that happens overnight. Some people do have that kind of natural knack for it, but for me, I just, I felt like more practice, practice makes perfect. And so um, I did some freelance work at Iowa Western Community College, um, honed my writing skills, my photography skills, my editing skills. And then after that, that's when I uh, went off and got my job in Hastings. And, you know, they call it the one man band reporter. So I pretty much did everything then. And, you know, that year in news, everything happens so fast. So. It's one of the best fields where you can learn how to do so many things in such a short period of time. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you're in it for a year and it, almost these days you have to know how to do everything because mm -hmm. you really won't land a gig. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know, especially with, you know, people cutting down on different job sets mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, you have to have all these skills, you know, yeah. to be able to make yourself very marketable. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. So in your spare time, um, what do you do for fun? Oh, gosh, you know, I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not technically a hobby, but... <laughs> but still, you know, you got to feed your tummy. Yeah, I love trying, like, new restaurants. I really uh -huh. do. I've pretty much, I've been to so many restaurants here in Omaha, and uh -huh. I, I enjoy spending time with my family, um, my fiancé, my friends. Uh -huh. Now, what has been the most rewarding part about being Miss Nebraska U.S.? I would say I truly learned what it takes to be a winner. Mm. Um, you know, uh, not having been in a pageant, I didn't know what was expected of me. I didn't know how hard it was going to be in terms of preparing and training for it. Um, you know, I spent countless days and hours preparing physically, um, preparing for the interview, preparing for the walk, the poise. I mean, I did it and, you know, I worked my full-time job and it was really cumbersome, you know, mm -hmm. but I knew that it was what I had to do to get to where I wanted to go. And so how many hours would you spend a week just in practice? Um, every single day, at least an hour, mm -hmm. um, as far as interview alone and then another hour with physical training and then you go home and you practice on your own mm -hmm. to make sure that you have it without your trainer in terms of the interview and the walk, in terms mm -hmm. of your trainer being right there. So you have to so hire somebody to do that as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So it's an investment. In its oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge investment. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it just it took a lot of hard work, a lot of training and you know, it was like every day I got off work. At that time, I was working a 1.30 a.m. shift to a 10.30 a.m. shift. So I would go straight to my personal training right after work, do that for an hour, um, you know, go home, eat, shower, and then go off to my other part of the training, which was interviewing, walk. Mm -hmm. um, and that typically lasted like an hour and a half. And by that time with my shift, you know, it's like, okay, you gotta get prepared for the next day and go to sleep, so. <laughs> wow, so, um, it such was a long just, day. Yeah, yeah, but I definitely, you know, wasn't one of those that just woke up and decided, okay, I'm gonna do it and, you know, just give it a shot and not, I told myself if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna invest the time, I'm gonna invest the money and I'm gonna work hard to, mm -hmm 
to get to where I know I need to be. And I wasn't necessarily going into it thinking that I have to be the winner and I want to be the winner. Mm -hmm. You know, I went in it more so with the mindset that, um, you know, I felt like I was going to get something out of it internally mm -hmm. um, if it wasn't actually taking home the crown. Yeah, <laughs> yes. After your, comp after your reign comes to an end, what are your plans after? Well, I'll continue to do my work. Um, I volunteer at a local food pantry, um, Heartland Hope Mission, so I'll continue to do volunteer work with them, continue the mission with Global Girls Leadership Group as well. And actually, I'm getting married next August, so congratulations! That will be my next planning for the wedding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'll absolutely. I'll be focused on that too. That's wonderful, so, yeah. that's wonderful. So what words of advice or encouragement would you offer to young girls mm -hmm. and young boys out there that really wanna go and do things with their lives that is fruitful? Mm -hmm. I would say never second guess yourself. And I would feel like, I feel like the greatest accomplishments that I've made in my life are those situations where I've been a little leery about it or I've questioned myself about it. And then I decided to just do it. You know, those are the circumstances or the goals, I guess I should say where you may have the greatest outcome is if, you know, it's like overcoming and conquering your fears. So, you know, I would say be fearless, be yourself, don't be afraid to speak up and just be confident in who you are. I grew up singing music and learning music and one of my favorite genres is gospel music. So I would like to sing to you, encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself sometimes you have to speak victory during the test and no matter how you feel speak the word and you will be healed speak over yourself Encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you have to speak a word over yourself. Hmm. Depression is all around, but God is a present help. All oh, the enemy created walls, but remember giants, they do fall. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. If you believe, you can achieve.